I just want to go across to Solunia Boborovska, Member of Parliament of Ukraine, joining us on the news track live from Kiev. Uh, so Solunia, welcome. Uh, we know that the Ukrainian counter-offensive has been underway for the last few weeks. It hadn't made much progress so far. From a Ukrainian perspective, as you've been, you and your country have been at the receiving end of this Russian offensive, what are you making of the current state of play where Vladimir Putin's authority has been questioned? He currently seems in control, but his command over power is definitely weaker uh, than in the past. What does this mean from a Ukrainian perspective for you as a member of parliament in Ukraine? So, first of all, we see all the situation as being very internal Russian situation. And it, um, even despite all Ukraine, the whole world uh, was watching what's going on in, in, uh, in Russia. But um, the point is that around 600,000 of Russian troops, uh, soldiers, they are here in Ukraine on Ukrainian soil and ground. That means we continue to fight and nothing has changed to Ukraine. Despite uh, Prigozhin was busy with his attempt uh, to show something to Putin, uh, his guys um, uh, were fighting on the front line uh, in Ukraine as well. So he, he didn't take them back from the front line. They stayed in Ukraine. He just mobilized the guys who, was, who were near him. But uh, you are quite right. We see Putin has started to show the weaker, his weaker side. He didn't expect, he was betrayed, uh, but still we haven't seen Prihorzhin for two days. We don't know the, we know for sure the price of the, of the world, of the word, uh, Putin's word, that he promised Prihorzhin to be alive. We still don't see uh, Prihorzhin anywhere. But um, I don't believe personally, and we don't believe in Parliament, in Ukraine as well, um, Wagner can be disappeared, but still, Wagner as a group, military, private group, but still, it can be a peer, Prohoshin private group, whatever. That's one of the obligatory and obvious tracks always Russian official, officials had uh, in their property as their instrument. We can see the African states, we can see the Latin America states where uh, Wagner group uh, is, uh, are operating. And they will be back uh, in Ukraine because they can use the resource that which the Russian ar army cannot. Uh, but the, the question is, not only for Ukraine, but for India, for uh, Europe, uh, for, for U.S. as well, what, where we are all ready, uh, all our partners, allies, yes, except Ukraine, um, for the changing um, of Russia, where we, are we ready to see it defeated? Um, do we ready and are we ready to see Russia without Putin? What's next? what kind of Russia can be after Putin. I think this, this, this questions were, were lying and put on the table in different different states uh, and probably in India as well. So that's, that would be the, the, the main question how to, how to make this state again not to provoke and not to invade and not to break the whole international rules. So Lomia Borovska. Thank you very much for joining us from Kiev, Member of Parliament from Ukraine, giving a Ukrainian perspective on how this opens a window of opportunity for the Ukrainian forces to move faster and also weakens the control of uh, Vladimir Putin. I want to go across to Moscow. Tatiana Khokreva joins us from there. Tatiana, that one question the whole world is asking, where is President Putin right now? And to what extent do you think his control over power, which so far was unquestioned and unquestionable, being weakened as a consequence of the actions of Yevgeny Prisgonin? Well, look, first and foremost, I'd have to correct you a little bit. Uh, you know, you call this a coup, an attempted coup, but nowhere in, his, in any of his addresses did Yevgeny Prigozhin say that he wanted to actually overthrow the government or the president. He never said that. Sure. So this whole rhetoric, you know, being built on the fact that this is an actual coup against the power of the president is flawed in its very base, you know, which kind of gives us a lot of the answer that you're looking for. But in the meantime, the power of the president 
being the person who actually solved this whole thing. He delegated the solution. He delegated the, um, you know, the talks that were held. And he did solve this. I don't think his image has been harmed whatsoever. So do you want to tell us what do you think is at play? Sure, you're right that uh, Prigozhin didn't officially say that he was marching, he was uh, attempting a coup against Putin, but he was marching towards Moscow. The army came within 200 miles of Moscow. That by itself is unsettling. Uh, for all practical purposes, it seemed like an insurrection, but you're right that he didn't mention the word coup. What do you think then is at play? From the lens of Moscow, from your eyes as a reporter on the ground in Russia, what do you think is happening? Why do you think this happened? Well, look, first and foremost, you know, you say army. Uh, there was a column of, you know, of cars. I would not necessarily call this an army. As you very well know, our actual army is you know, nowhere near what uh, the, the, the cars that were driving towards Moscow. Um, from a point of view of a person who was in Moscow on Saturday, you know, we were watching this, but, um, you know, you probably should have been in the city to understand the level of which, at which it wasn't, you know, it didn't look like an actual attempted coup to anybody who was here. I mean, people were out in the streets you know, doing sports, going to restaurants, surely worried about the, the images, but not as much so as, you know, it has been portrayed uh, everywhere outside of Russia. Okay, so do you think that uh, Vladimir Putin's control over power in Russia is weakened at all, or do you think he's still as unassailable as he was last week? Weakened in what sense? Weakened in the sense that he first said that there would be action against Prigozhin and those from uh, the Wagner group who led this insurrection. He promised the sternest action and then agreed to an amnesty of sorts, uh, had the Wagner group go because they questioned Putin's authority. Putin is seen as a very strong man leader. He doesn't take to insurrections and people questioning his authority and isn't really known to be a forgiving man. So clearly he was under pressure, which is why he had to let uh, Wagner group go towards Belarus. If this was the old Putin, he would have marched the Russian army who didn't seem to fight Wagner and taken them down. And by now, Prigozhin would have had to, had to face the consequences of his actions, ma'am. But also this situation is not over yet. 